one of the most important things to work well in R is to actually use a good IDE or environment to help you to uh, write your code. And RStudio is one of the best options. There are multiple options, but RStudio is really designed for R. Um, it's getting developed all the time, so it's a great option. All right, so why this RStudio? It helps make things uh, faster because you can complete your code. Um, it makes it easier uh, because you don't have to remember necessarily the names of the functions and packages that you're gonna be using. However, it's not as easy as something like Stata. Um, if you're wanting something like that with drop-down menus, then we recommend that you check out these two packages. They kind of make a, a situation like that. Um, however, it will reduce some of your flexibility in terms of what you can do. So that's hopefully why you're interested in this course. Um, I'm a little worried that I may have gotten an email from another student. So if we could just pause for a second, I'm going to, I'm going to check that really quick. Okay, it looks all right. All right, so our studio in general looks like this. You'll have this plain white uh, screen with multiple panels in it. Um, and it, like we said, it makes it easier to write code and it also helps you to manage your files. So you'll be able to see the files that are in your directory that you're trying to work in um, on your computer. It also allows you to view images, which is really, really useful. So when you're making plots and things like that, you can interactively look at them as you create them. You can also export reports into various different file types like PDF, um, HTML, Word, or even slides like this. And it also provides a lot of assistance as well as a history of what you've typed in. But there are two major pains that we want you to focus on right now. I know that that was kind of a lot, but there's two major pieces. There's the R console, which is basically just a simple interpreter. It's where you're going to test out code. And then there's the source editor. And the editor is where you're going to actually write a script, for example. And so you're going to save your code. And we recommend that you start trying to write in the editor as early as possible because it will help you to remember what you've tried to do before and what you've learned. So when you open up our studio, at first, all you'll see is the console, which later after you start a script, it will be on the bottom. And again, this is not saved. So anything you type in there, you'll see it in your history, but it's, it's not going to be saved. And it can be very tedious to scroll through your history to try to figure out what you've done. So it's not good to rely on that. And then once you open a script, then you'll see that at the top. Um, one little quick point, if you highlight a line and you pre press Command Enter or Control Enter, depending on your machine, then you can directly run that code. Otherwise, you can copy paste it into the console. So if you've already started RStudio, you're only going to see the console. You have to start open a script to see the editor. And so first you'll have a screen with just three panels. And then if you go to the little plus sign in the far left corner and select our script, then you'll have the editor and the console. Uh, this is a cheat sheet link. Again, you can find this on the website for our slides. Um, this is just a piece of it, but it has lots of nifty information about all of the fancy things you can go do in our studio. And there are a lot. I don't even know all of them and I've been working in R for a very long time, but our studio keeps um, updating and adding new features. So it's, it's really nice. So R is really a command line 
sort of language with a set of functions loaded. Um, so now we're going to get into what we've been talking about these packages. So packages are groups of functions. Typically packages have more than one function. They might have just one, but typically more than one. And a function is basically a piece of code that does something, it returns a result. Um, so that may be even data, getting you data, or it could be applying some action to data. Um, and packages can be acquired in a few different ways. You actually get several packages, quite a few, just by having R. And these are called base R packages. But then you can install extra packages from CRAN or GitHub. And what we just did was installing a package from GitHub that one of our colleagues developed. Um, so our users like us make these packages and also this company called RStudio who created RStudio. Uh, they also release a lot of the most widely used packages. So one thing to be aware of is that not all packages are good. Um, so uh, because anybody can develop them and release them, particularly on GitHub. On CRAN, there is some sourcing for that, but even still, you need to be a bit careful about what analyses you might use with certain packages. However, if you know that the person who wrote it is some authority on R, like you see that they've written a lot of papers or there's somebody like Hadley Wickham, who's kind of the head authority on R, he's uh, one of the lead developers at our studio, then that can be helpful. We also suggest looking at this uh, blog post by one of our colleagues about how to trust a package. Um, but we'll be talking about basically two suites of packages. There's this base R, which we said these are packages that come with R when you install it, but also this newer uh, suite of packages called the Tidyverse. And the Tidyverse is really great because it makes things more intuitive and more interpretable for other people who are reading your code. It kind of reads more like um, the language that we would use when we're speaking about an analysis. Um, but we're going to teach you some base R because if you're searching for help on R, you're going to often find it. Um, but a lot of people are transitioning to the tidyverse because it's pretty great. <laughs> All right, so let's take some time to get familiar with our studio ourselves. So one of the first things that we'd like you to do and that we recommend when you're working in R is to use projects. And so projects are really cool because they actually bring up the files that you were working on um, into your editor and it saves settings that you've had for RStudio uh, when you were previously working on your project. Uh, it also just helps to organize your work. So you can have a bunch of different files, a bunch of different scripts, um, data sets, et cetera, in this single project and it'll all pop up together. So the way that you can create one is to go to File, New Project, um, then create a new directory and new project. So it'll look something like this. And ultimately, you need to name your project maybe something like Intro to R. So um, if you could all try to create a project now. I'm going to check the chat. Okay, there's some really good questions um, about, so we talked about how when you run things in the console, it doesn't save um, your code. 
and how packages installing and loading packages is different um, because of this, particularly when you create a project, it's going to save what you have loaded. Um, so you don't need to do it again. So that's one exception. Ava described that really well. <laughs> and also um, to create a project here, you can see it here. You go to file, new project, new directory. And it, you should have some screens like this. And then someone had a, a really good question about if, if packages are updated, what do, how does that affect our scripts, basically? Um, so what people tend to do is they put, they, can, they use a function called session info at the end of their scripts, and that shows people what version of the packages that they used. Um, so it is true that indeed sometimes your results will change slightly for your analyses. And so you will need to um, indicate what version you've been using. Um, but it is, it is true that it's, it's good practice to keep your packages up to date because generally they're updated for a reason. <laughs> I hope that answered your question. Okay, I'm gonna move on. The other thing within that we're gonna do and work with uh, throughout the course is what's called an R markdown file. Some of you may be familiar with markdown. Um, it's a markup language that helps you to um, basically write commentary. Uh, and so it's really great for R because you can write commentary about what your code is doing in between what's called chunks of code um, where you actually put your actual code. So in these special reports, you will have comments about your code, your code and the output. Um, so they're basically like fancy scripts. Um, and the cool thing is that you can output these to a bunch of different file types like PDFs or again, slides or um, HTML. So you can host your results as a website which is really useful for working with collaborators. So when you create your first R markdown file, um, which you can just go to the little plus sign um, or file, new file on choose markdown, then um, it will pull up a, an example R markdown file with some code chunks and if you press this little green button, this play button, it will run that specific code chunk. So um, if you've created an R markdown file, uh, we suggest you try running one of these chunks. How are we doing with creating projects and creating markdown files? Anyone need help with that or struggling with that? Feel free to message us directly if you prefer. Okay, sounds like we're doing good. All right, and not only can you run chunks, but you can run all previous chunks by pressing this button. Very, very useful button to know um, because once you have a lot of chunks in your markdown file, it can take a really long time to click all of them and that that would that's just too much so <laughs> you can press this button to make sure that your script is running up to whatever point you're working on um but there's this knit button that has this cute like yarn ball and that will actually create the full report so you can try that now with the example r markdown that you created um, when you create any r markdown it does this you can try knitting to HTML and it should pop up as basically a website report. And we'll give you a bit of time to try that out. So if you press, can you see my cursor? So there's this little plus button here. You can click there 
and it has a little downward arrow and has some options. And I think the second option, I can't remember off the top of my head, <laughs> is our markdown. So if you just click that, it should create a new one. No, you can leave it as untitled for now if you'd like, that's fine. Or you can name it something like Interlog. Actually, maybe we can do like a live demonstration. Okay. Um, so here's where the new file is, where you can create your R markdown. And that's just like creating an R script, it's going to also open the editor. And yeah, it asks me about title and author and default options are fine. You don't have to actually press anything, just leave everything as default and press OK. And then you will have an untitled R markdown. And here are some chunks and you can press this green button. You can see that when you hover over certain things in RStudio, it'll actually tell you what it is that you're potentially able to do. And then you can run that chunk and you see that the output of the result is produced. And I'm happy to run through that again if people need me to. And again, then this button is the one that does all the previous prompts. So if I close this and close the output, it'll rerun it. And we'll be talking more about our markdown later. Um, but this is about the level that you'll need. You can also go up to file, new file, and then select our markdown. That's easier than the green button. Yeah, so the knit button is going to create an entire report. So I'm going to press this now. Um, I, it's fine to save it as untitled for me. If you want to call it something, you can. And then you'll see that it pops open an HTML version of the report. Which hopefully you guys can see. Okay, good. <laughs> so you see our title, which is untitled. And then um, the code summary cars shows the output and it shows the plot. So running it runs all of the chunks. And creates a report. Okay, how are we feeling about this? Are we ready to move on? All right, so again, if you're looking for this in the slides, um, this is how later you can find to make an R markdown. Um, and this is what you should have in your layout if you have done that. You should see an R markdown file that looks like this in your editor. If your layout doesn't look like that, um, please feel free to chat one of us. Uh, but you can also go to RStudio uh, into preferences and then modify your pane layout. But by default, it should look the way that we have done it. But it's possible to accidentally close one of the panes. OK, so a little bit about the other panes. So this is where you're going to see uh, your environment. And so if you load any data, you'll actually see the data show up here. Um, and then your history is where you can see the commands that you used. Um, and we're not going to get too much into build and git, but if you're advanced, uh, git can be great for version control. We recommend in general not saving your working environment 
because if you ran something in your console, but you didn't write it in your script, then you can cause issues where you'll think that your script is running, but it's actually relying on some data that you created from your console. Um, so your data will get modified in your working environment and that gets saved if you save the working environment. So basically at the end, when you're done with R and it asks you, do you wanna save your working environment? You can say no. If you say yes, you can later press this room button and that will delete the environment. But you need to make sure you're on the environment tab. Don't worry about this too much uh, for now, but it's, it's useful for later. All right, and then, um, so yeah, kind of described all of this already, that the workspace environment just shows you what objects you have in R, what's loaded, um, and your history can be helpful for debugging a bit, but we don't recommend that you really rely on it. However, you can use it to run commands again. You can also press the up button to see a command that you just typed in. Um, and as you keep pressing the up button in the console, it should continue to show you commands that you've typed. So then the other pane, which is on the bottom right, is where you will see files on your computer, the viewer, which can help you look at data, help which takes you directly to our studio and package documentation for how to use certain packages and functions plots which shows you actual figures and in some cases images if you're working with images as well as a package tab which shows you which packages you have installed um, but for the most part for now Pay attention to your console and your editor. A few useful shortcuts, um, and you might want to come back to this later once you're more familiar. This can make it faster to work in our studio. You can use Control Enter or Command Enter, depending on whether you're on Windows or Mac, to evaluate a particular line of code in your editor. And if you want to switch from the editor or script page, to the console, you can press Control-1 and Control-2. OK, so now we should be ready for our first lab.